we go barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Um, you know, we're doing. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing. So, uh, let's get right into it. We have six, well, we had seven games in the Sloop Picks, the sixth, or uh, rather the seventh game. Uh, you can hear our detailed thoughts on during Know Your Enemy, the show we release on Thursdays. Uh, we will talk in detail about Ohio State versus Penn State. Um, but uh, we are doing the other six games in this episode right here. So where would you like to start, Kyle? Well, well let's let's start with the uh, with the first one here as I'm trying to copy it. It is UCF and Oklahoma. Uh, noon game on a ABC here. Uh, I think the interesting one why Jared chose this one is looking at the point spread, 19 and a half points in favor of the Sooners. Is that why? Is it because I was trying to find a second game in the noon window and it was death? Air Force and Navy was there. Okay. I Listen, no disrespect, but and Rutgers and in Indiana. You missed your opportunity for this one. Rutgers and in Indiana, Jared. Opportunity. Opportunity, yes. you call it. Yes. Listen, it I was try an opportunity. Listen, I try and do two games in the noon window, two games in the midday window, and two games in the evening window, and then a bonus game somewhere else. That that's how I divide up the seven picks. That this that this was the best of what was left at noon after uh, Ohio State and Penn State was was taken off the board. All right. Well, I got I got Oklahoma in this one here. <laughs> I just I think I think Oklahoma's offense is just going to be too much here. Uh, defense is not it's not half bad either, but yeah, I got Oklahoma to cover this. I. I got nothing more to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is not your older brother's UCF. The The team is three and three so far this year uh, and only two and four against the spread. Oklahoma, on the other hand, is undefeated. Uh, both in the regular season, but also against the spread. The Sooners are still undefeated against the spread. Give me Oklahoma. Duncan asks, is this a sleepwalk risk? I mean, maybe for the sloop picks, maybe not for the actual game itself. Oklahoma seems like a pretty well-coached, straightforward football team. Th those teams are not typically super high risk. Yeah. And the weird thing about UCF is because they were so good a few years ago, that their name carries a little more cachet than the team actually deserves. So it's just like, Oh, it's, it's UCF <laughs> guys. You better be careful. Mm -hmm. It's UCF, but it's, it's just, it's, it's just UCF. Yeah. All right. Next game here. Oh, we're moving down. Austin, what does oh, Austin, yep, have Austin say? says here. I mean, uh, he says, I mean, who cares? Dylan Fair. Gabriel is pretty good. Oklahoma come coming off a fun win. If UCF is home, I would consider them, but eh, Oklahoma wins easily. But could UCF cover? Probably not. <laughs> he has Oklahoma winning covering. He puts a score fifty two to twenty, and that might sound about right. I, that sounds that sounds about right. Yeah, I would I would say so. I I would say say more like 49 to 20 but we're in the same ballpark if you know you know what's what's the next game Kyle yeah, we're going to head down to SEC land here Tennessee and Alabama 330 game and Alabama is a nine and a half point favorite I mean, I, I, I gotta pull. I gotta pull up the 
the schedule here for Alabama here. Uh, games in which in which they played teams with a heart. Well, I'll, I'll just pick games here just to fit in my narrative. Last week, <laughs> last week here, Arkansas won by three points. Yeah. Before that, Texas A and M won by six points. Yeah. And they lost by ten to to Texas too. They did have the fourteen point victory over Ole Miss and Southern Florida. This is going to be a team that has somewhat that's going to have somewhat of a uh, a pulse here. I think this is going to be a lot closer than nine and a half points. So I'll pick I'll pick Tennessee to cover here. Nine and a half points. That's seems like a lot, especially for how much offensively. Uh, Alabama has been struggling. Yeah, you know, defensively they they're going to win games, but how much can you really rely on the defense to keep bailing out your offense? Uh, against Tennessee, I think it'll probably work out. I don't like either of these teams, but I dislike Tennessee much much more. Um Bama's defense is still killer at least. Um yeah, I I think Tennessee is totally fake whereas Alabama is half fake. So, yeah, give me Alabama to win and cover. All right. And also said, Austin just says it just means more. Alabama wins, but Tennessee covers 24-17. All right, next game here. We're moving out west. Uh, no, this is not a Pac-12 after dark game. It's a 3.30 kickoff. Washington State and Oregon. Uh, Oregon coming off that... That heartbreaker loss last weekend to Washington. Going to try to take it. Going to try to take out their anger on the their brother uh, Washington State. Uh, Oregon is a eighteen and a half point favorite in this game. What you got, Jared? Uh, Oregon suffered both their first on the field loss and against the spread loss last week. They were perfect in both categories before last week's. Uh, loss to Washington. Um, Washington State is uh, at the end of a, a really tough four game stretch, and they're already at two straight losses in that four game stretch. Um, both of these teams need a get right game, but I think only Oregon's going to get theirs. Uh, Washington State might keep it close for a bit, but Oregon pulls away and pulls away hard. Uh, Probably in the second half at some point. So, yeah, Oregon wins and covers. Yeah, I. That's a tough number. 18 and a half is a lot of points. That, that That's a lot, especially with a. They Washington lost by State. they lost to Arizona by more last week. Yeah, I was I was I was about to say they they had some really good games here early on. They they beat Wisconsin. Uh, they beat Oregon State, who was ranked 14th at the time. But they seemed to kind of fall off after that. Lost to UCLA. And as you, you mentioned, Jared, they only put up six points to Arizona here. It's a and really think, tough four-game stretch. Like in defense of Washington State, including Oregon, it's well, a go, really go, go tough four-game to, stretch. Go talk to Notre Dame about a four-game stretch. Well, it's not as tough <laughs> as that. Um, yeah, I got, I got Oregon to cover here. I just not, not enough, not enough firepower for, for the Cougars here. So I'll, I'll take the ducks. What's Austin have to say? Uh, this could be the most fun game of the weekend bearing the Ohio state game. Of course, both teams coming off tough losses, just in different ways. I think Oregon easily bounces back and takes their rage off of the game day flag waivers, or is it the Cougars? I don't know. Same thing. Oregon wins and covers 49-16. That's a that's a hefty, hefty margin. That is. All right. I got the next game here, Jared. Another SEC matchup here. We got, we're going night games now. Ole Miss and Auburn. Uh 7 o'clock on ESPN here. Uh Ole Miss is a six and a half. Point favorite. What you got, Jared? Auburn sucks. Give me Ole Miss. 
I was so excited when this was under seven points. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get be able to take Ole Miss and, and get a full touchdown buffer. Hell yeah. Give me Ole Miss. Mm hmm. What, what kind of Auburn team are we going to see here? Are we going to see one that put that had the had Georgia really close at the end there? Or are we going to see the Auburn team where they just played last weekend against LSU and they just looked like crap here? Yeah, I, I, I agree, Jared. The six and a, the six and a half seems like easy money to hit me. But um, but knowing us, easy. we're probably yeah. But knowing us, Jared, we're probably going to be wrong here. Wa we've walked <laughs> we've we've walked into Vegas's trap, haven't we? Probably here. But then yeah. you look at Ole Miss, and and they've they, they've done well. Yeah, yeah. They they came off a seven point victory over at Arkansas, better than how Alabama did. Uh, they did beat LSU um, in a close game there. They. Yeah, I, I like Ole Miss to win win by a touchdown here. This is I, I think I think Ole Miss will be able to get it done. Uh Austin Austin again says it just means more. <laughs> uh he has Auburn to outright win. 23-22. I mean I've seen crazier things happen. All right, next, next. up here. We're going to ACC land here. Maybe the the second um, most entertaining game, perhaps Duke I, and Florida State. And we're not talking about basketball here. It depends upon if Cam Rising plays in our next game that we're going to pick. Uh, then it might be that yeah. game. But we're focused on Duke, Florida State right now. Um, I like Duke. Yeah, this I, I, I really yeah, this like Duke. Yeah, this game's a 13 and a half point favorite for the Seminoles. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it, that, and, you know, I think that number is too big uh, is, is the summary of what I'm about to say. Um, I like Duke. I like their defense. I like both of these teams quarterbacks a lot. I do fear a lot for Jordan Travis's health, the Florida state quarterback. Um, I, I've watched him play in two separate games now this season where he's gone back to the locker room with his left arm just dangling there, and yet they continue to run him. Um, whenever someone complains about Ryan Day not letting his quarterbacks run, I encourage you to watch a Florida State game. And, you know, they put their season at risk every time they run him. Um, yeah, It's, I don't know. I, I see Florida State playing a real dangerous game with their season with the way they treat Travis's health. Um, does that factor into this game? It could. But but ultimately, I think 14 points is just a little too much against a Duke team that is capable of scoring and has a solid defense. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I think Florida State wins, but. I'm going to take Duke to cover. I haven't heard from him yet, but is is Leonard playing in this game here? He hasn't he hasn't played he hasn't played since his uh, injury to Notre Dame. I don't know. I mean, if, and, I, if, and I think that's they'll they'll keep that under that, wraps. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a a big part of it too because you you look at. <laughs> If you look at Duke and how they played against NC State last weekend, uh, the quarterback play was not all that great. The uh, right the, the freshman quarterback uh, Bellin Henry Bellin four for twelve in that game. Right, um, it's I've heard I've heard that they expect him to play, but I. I, I don't I don't even I don't even know if expect. I think it's like I, I don't know. It's it's all crap. The point is that everyone keeps their injury stuff under wraps nowadays. So we just don't know. Um part of me thinks he plays. Um if he doesn't play, that that those 14 points all of a sudden don't look so great. <laughs> yeah. Uh I got I got Duke covering as well. Both quarterbacks are 
hurt here, which means that I, th I think this could be a lot closer game here. So I'll, I'll take Duke to, to cover at least. Jordan Travis is still think, playing, despite the fact yeah. that his left shoulder has been beat to hell. He hasn't well, that, missed any time well, that, yet. Yeah, that's why I said with both quarterbacks injured here. <laughs> so one of them's uh, one of them for, we know we know one State of them's going to play. We don't know about the other one. That's that's yeah, the issue. I think, I think Florida State will win, but yeah, thirteen and a half is too much too much for me. What's Austin? Austin. Say? Austin says here. I really like both of these quarterbacks. Both are banged up for sure. Travis is probably a bit more skilled, but he's also like thirty four. Travis could end up. Uh, could end up. Goo? I'm not. I'm not sure what if not sure. Ike. I, I, he the must. Heisman by the end of the year, and I think he will play like it in this game. I'm Maybe going to guess he up. means that he could could end up with the Heisman by the end of the year. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. He type out it. I'm not sure what he's trying to say. Uh, Florida State to win and barely cover. 38-24. Next game. The last game here. We have another Pac-12 game, Jared. This time it is Utah and I'm sorry. US. This is a Big Ten versus Big 12 game. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, of course. Eight o'clock Fox. This way we played on. The Trojans are a six and a half point favorite in this game. Kind of like last week about, well, will uh, the quarterbacks play here? <laughs> will Utah's quarterback play in this one? Will we will actually see uh, rising play in this game? And everything that I've been reading about, this game will pretty much make or break if you will see rising back in a Utah uniform again. Like if yeah. you do not see him in this, if you do not see him in this game, you're not going to see him the rest of the year. And the, that's, that's it for rising. That's an unfortunate way to end what's been a very fun career for him. Mm -hmm. it, it was. Yeah. If that's what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to assume rising's not in this one here. I just, just something just doesn't seem right when they said that he could potentially play in week one. And then here we are week eight and he still hasn't taken a snap here. There's something else going on. I, I feel maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel there's something else going on. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to assume he's not going to be in this game here. So, and without him, Utah's offense is just one of one of statistically worst offenses in the country here. I think I read that there were 122nd in passing, which for those that don't know, it's 134 uh, teams and they're ranked 122nd in passing. And they're going to need to do that to keep up with uh, USC scoring here. So I got, I got USC six and a half. That's a touchdown here. Yeah. I'll take the Trojans in this one. I'm going to go Utah, um, and, I, and I base that primarily on the fact that USC has, they have utterly failed to cover the past four games. And I, I, I need, I need, this needs to be said. They were a 34 point favorite against Arizona State. And they only won by 14. They were a 21 and a half point favorite against Colorado. They only won by seven. They were a 21 point favorite against Arizona and they won by two. They were a three point dog to Notre Dame and lost by 28 there. They've missed the spread by 20, 14, 19 and 25 points the past four weeks. Not only are they not covering, they're not getting close to covering and haven't in a month. Give me Utah. All right. And Austin says here, I've been trying to tell people that Caleb Williams is mid for years, but no one wanted to believe me. 
He'll be slightly better version of Kyler Murray in the NFL. Cool. Anyways, if USC wasn't at home, and if I felt great about Rising's chances to play and play completely healthy, then I would take Utah. And I would agree with that. I can't, so I'm forced to hope USC bounces back in a track meet. And he has USC to win and cover 45 to 36. I think if it goes uh, track meet mode, Utah's toasted. Um, y- Utah needs to keep the scoring low in this game. Um, what, what's the over under on do. this, Kyle? You have that number uh, handy? Uh, I will pull it up here in about 10, actually five seconds here. It is the over under is 56. It was higher than I thought. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think the, I think if you look at the past few USC games, 56 is pretty low. Um, well, you look at you look at Utah, if, how many points they, they've scored. Utah, Utah has only scored 24 points, 20, 14, 7. Yeah. And then they had 34 points against Cal this last weekend. I, Here's they don't the score that many points. If it's a Utah game, in other words, if they hit that under. Hell, mm-hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll, that, I'll that, even that give it a few more favor points. Utah. Yeah. yeah, that'll favor Utah. Yeah, that'll favor Utah. This, just, this, this is the point I'm making. If it's under, it's Utah. If it's over, it's USC. So I'm just saying, if if anyone out there is maybe building a parlay or something, like either win spectacularly or lose spectacularly, that's all I'm saying. You know, don't 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 take USC to cover and the under. That that's a losing mm-hmm. combo. That that's yeah. my point. Um, Got it. So if this is a Utah game, I think Utah has a chance to win. Keep the keep the total points under 30. Uh, if if or excuse me, not 30, 30 a piece, 60. Uh, keep if the total points exceed 60. Uh, it sounds like a USC game, and I expect USC to win and cover, or at least win. We'll see about mm-hmm. the cover. All right. All right. Those are all the games here, Jared. Uh, let's take a moment look at the games for the for the weekend here. Um, we're going to pick our upset alert game here. Do you chaos pick? Do you have a what's that? Our chaos pick. Yeah, our chaos pick. Yeah. So let's look here. We got teams that are ranked versus teams that are not ranked here. So uh, first one I see here is twenty tw- fifth <laughs> ranked UCLA versus Stanford. We saw we saw Stanford and how and then with their uh, big win over Colorado this last weekend. OK, that's that's about as good as you're going to get 25th rank versus uh, a non rank there. Uh, can Auburn pull up the upset against Ole Miss, uh, who is currently 13th? Um, looking, looking, looking here, Iowa and your Golden Gophers, Jared, not my Golden Gophers. Iowa's 24th. Tulane, 23rd versus North Texas. I don't think tech, uh, North Texas is that good of a team <laughs> this year. Um, we talked about Washington State and Oregon. I don't think I don't think Oregon's going to lose that game there. Uh, the only other one I can see here then, Jared, it's Air Force and Navy. Is Air Force officially ranked? Air Force is 22nd. Ooh. You can see how much I care about the AP. And that's why we put them in the B tier, right? Uh, I don't I didn't know that they were in the AP when I put them in the B tier. I put them in the B tier because they're undefeated. <laughs> for the record. And, um, and I guess the other one too, but I think Virginia Virginia is not a good team. They're they're one in five. <laughs> they they uh they play UNC, which UNC I just recently beat Miami, so yeah, I wouldn't take that one. Actually, there, there's not that really many good games to pick here. Oh, can Sparty can Sparty uh, beat up their little brother this weekend? Uh no, no, they can't. I'll, I'll just go <laughs> ahead and I'll just go ahead and say that no, they can't. Yeah. Uh, you could no, I I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't take that at all. 
I was about to say you could cheat with Iowa apparently ranked again. Again, you can tell yeah. how much attention I pay to the AP. Um, but Minnesota sucks. They're they're very, very bad at football. Um, well, I missed what Missouri is ranked 20th versus South Carolina. It's another one. And I I would I would not touch that one either. I would not touch that one. Yeah. Uh let's see. I kind of I think Auburn over Ole Miss might be your best chaos opportunity of the weekend. Um Yeah. Uh, you could make a case for Washington State beating Oregon. I wouldn't. Um, Duke over Florida State. Duke's, Duke's ranked, but there's 12 spots of difference between them. So, I don't know. I mean, I would count it as chaos, although we don't count that as chaos for the sake of this game that we play at the end of this episode. Um I'm a, yeah, I'm going to go Auburn over Ole Miss is my chaos pick. Okay. All right. I don't really have any, many did good you, options I'm sorry, did you here. pick one? I yeah. did not yet. <laughs> okay. There are, there are not many good options at all. Um, I guess I guess what I would go with here then is... <sighs> I guess I guess I'll take your your uh your golden gophers, Jared. Not my golden gophers. Over Iowa. I, I that's a losing proposition, Kyle. So are all of these other ones. That's fair. I'm not picking for I'm not picking Virginia. No, no, that's even worse. I'm not picking Army over LSU. Maybe I could pick Stanford uh, yeah. over UCLA. Maybe I could pick Stanford over UCLA, but that's a 25. Stanford, Stanford only <laughs> plays well against Colorado. Yeah, true. Jared has so many splinters from rowing that boat. I not 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 my boat, not my splinters, not my not my golden gophers. <laughs> yeah. Historically, right. the West is chaos. I mean, you're not wrong, but also, historically, Iowa only loses a couple games. And by the way, Kyle, can you do me a favor and, and look up the current uh, win-loss streak against uh, Iowa and Minnesota? I heard someone say this, and I don't believe it, and I need you to confirm it for me. When was the last time Minnesota beat Iowa? Because if what I heard is correct, I, I don't believe it. Someone told me. What 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 did you hear, Jared? 99? No. No. 1999. Last, last, last time Minnesota beat Iowa. Yeah. Okay. So I think what you heard, 99, the last time Minnesota beat Iowa at Iowa. Okay. So... Either I heard wrong or they said wrong. So the last time Minnesota won was in 2014 when they beat Iowa 51 to 14. But that was in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yep. But yeah, they've won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in a row. Iowa has won ten in a row at their home stadium. But Iowa is also on a overall eight game win streak going back to, like I mentioned, to that game in 2014 against Minnesota. By the way, just speaking of Big Ten West and whatnot, I didn't want to, in case there are any Penn State fans listening, I didn't want to give them, I didn't want to give them this. So I'm going to say it on this episode instead. It's weird that we aren't going to be playing. I mean, unless we play them in the Big Ten championship game, which becomes possible next next season. Yes. We don't play Penn State next two years. They're yeah. not on the yeah, schedule in 24 or 25. I, 
it's funny. I have a coworker who's a Penn State fan that I talk to weekly, and he's like, That's he mistake. told me, yeah, he told me, you know, it's actually going to be nice not having to play Ohio State every year. <laughs> and they want to call it a rivalry. Ha. He 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 doesn't. He yes, doesn't he does. call yes, it a rivalry. He, yeah, he does. He does to his friends. Listen, they did, and then we started shaming them for it, and then that's when they started doing the hashtag unrivaled thing. They took their ball and they went home. They kept saying, you're our rival, and we kept saying, no, you're not. And then we started, and then they kept doing it for such a long time that we started making fun of them for it, and that's that's when they took their ball and went home. They're good? Penn State is good. Uh, it's, I mean, you go listen to that episode. Penn State's a very good football team. We think. We don't know. This, their schedule's bad. So it's, but not elite. No, but not elite. We don't want to play you guys either. I mean, I didn't say I wanted to. I just said it's kind of weird that we aren't. It's just. It felt like a fixture in the schedule for a very long time is all. All right, Kyle. Um, that's what they would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got you. That's why you put it in quotes. I, I, I feel you now, Suncard. I, 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 I pick up what you're putting down. All right. That's it. That's the end of the show, I think. Um, Kyle, do you have anything... Uh, just uh, come hang out in the Discord server, discord.sleepcast.com. Um, or don't. I don't care. Kyle, what do you have in? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not your goddamn dad. I don't care what you do. Come join the Discord server or don't. It's whatever. Kyle, everything. Kyle's corner. Uh, I think I saw on Ohio State social media that they're going to try to scarlet out. The stadium at noon here. Stop. Just stop. Scarlet out doesn't make sense. You want to black out the shoe? Okay, that that makes sense. You don't. But it's scarlet. a noon game. Oh, oh. But it's a noon game. I'm a dad. Get in the Discord. Duncan, you're a dad. You're not their dad. Sidebar is Discord social media. Sorta. I mean, is a chat room or a message board social media? Those are closer comparisons than, say, like what we think of as social media. Scarlet out, just wear the home jersey. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, do it. Don't 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 be a butt and not participate just to not participate. But like. I'm just I'm I'm more tied up in the fact that Scarlet out doesn't make grammatic sense. And that they need to come up with a better name. Yeah. You call it the Scarlet Fever game or something. I don't know. That's just what I thought up off the top of my head. I know maybe in post COVID world, we don't want to call it. Uh, we don't want to maybe name it Scarlet Fever. I, I don't know. Maybe we maybe we care. Maybe we don't. I, I don't I don't I don't care. Um, <laughs> I think everyone should wear different shades of gray so that when they pan over the audience, it looks like it's a broadcast from many years ago. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Scarlet Tide. Yeah, I can't do Scarlet Tide either. That's just because nope. it's. You know, no, 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 no. I got it. 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 Now we this the, there is a scheduling issue with this, but every year Ohio State should do the Red October game. Does anyone remember the movie Hunt, Hunt for Red October? Is is that is that is that will anyone get the reference? Am I just old? So it is a good movie, but do the kids know it exists? I'm yeah, you're old too. We're both old, Duncan. We're just two old guys talking to each other right now. 
maybe Red October is good. Maybe it isn't. I don't know if the kids care. Do the kids care? I don't know. The Red October game is not bad. It's not. I, I might be able to do better. Guys, I, I need to hear from you. In Discord server, in the YouTube comments. We cannot use the phrase scarlet out the shoe. It doesn't make sense. What do we call? Well, what's the alternative name for that? That's that. That's my question to you. Uh, Let us know in the comments what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> call to action engagement. Also, leave us a like or something. I, I don't care. Subscribe or don't. I, I'm, once again, not your dad. <laughs> all right, that's it, Jared. That's all, that's all I got. Uh, tonight's the Raging Nathans. So, um, I don't know. Duncan's typing again. I just want to see what he has to say. He says the kids need to get off my lawn. Um, then he was still typing, but that's OK. Uh, tonight's ending music are the Raging Nathans. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the Raging Nathans.